I'm at the airport and I'm ready to go and search for the lost print of the magnificent Ambersons. They destroyed Ambersons and the picture itself destroyed me. I was, uh, I didn't get a job as director for years afterwards. It's a great film, uh, even though it's uh, missing about uh, 45 minutes. This is Mr. Morgan. Remember you very well indeed. I want to know just who's dared to say these things if I have to force my way into every house in town. The full 131 minute version, I have no doubt, is superior to what we have. My name is Josh Grossberg, and for the past 25 years, I've been searching for the lost print of the Magnificent Ambersons. The Amberson Mansion, the pride of the town. My quest has been profiled in Vanity Fair, Empire Magazine, Le Monde, and Simon Callow's Orson Welles biography. In December 1994, I went looking for it in Brazil with my college roommate, Dominic Gao. Thanks to a fortuitous meeting with Brazilian filmmaker Rogério Sganzerla, we discovered some tantalizing leads. My hunch is that it's, if, if it's anywhere, it should be in New York. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think you're right. After pulling together a director's cut of Ambersons with editor Robert Wise, Wells flew down to Brazil to begin shooting the four stories he called It's All True. The plan called for Wise to join him in Rio, where they would finish the film. We made a print, composite print, with everything in it, sound, sound effects, the music, everything. And I was scheduled to fly down with the print and show it to Orson. But when Wise couldn't travel because of wartime restrictions, in February 1942, he sent a work print of Ambersons to Wells to use as a reference, so Orson could cable him suggestions for further cuts. But unbeknownst to the director, RKO held two test screenings, which were a disaster. <laughs> All right. We tried to respect as much as we could of, of what Orson originally put into the film. Gone. The whole end of it. The whole, the whole uh, an actual plot was changed. Automobiles, Automobiles are a useless nuisance. In other words, it's about the time Major Amberson dies, the picture starts to go to become another picture, becomes their picture. I haven't any idea what happened to that print. I know you mentioned it to me at one time, and uh, I just haven't given it any thought. I just supposed it was sort of junk down there. It was certainly never sent back. I'm hunting for this print, and we have leads that no one else has, but I need to get back down to Brazil to follow up on them. In 1994, we met an archivist at Synergia Studios, Michel Du Espirito, who said he saw canisters belonging to Wells in the archives in the late 1950s, what could very well be the lost print of the Magnificent Ambersons. And Brazilian collectors had raided the archives, and the print might at this moment be resting in someone's attic, its true value unknown, forgotten to film history. So I imagine it was just it was left down there. It'd be interesting if that print could ever be found because one could see the original pre-preview version, the one that Orson finished up at that time. I'm like the reporter in Citizen Kane, searching for the meaning of Rosebud, exploring a pivotal moment in his career that saw him exiled from Hollywood and reinvent himself as perhaps the greatest independent filmmaker of all time. So I was fired from Archeo. That I never recovered from that, uh, from that attack. Tragically, Wells' original footage was destroyed. Help me finally track down these collectors and other leads I found in Brazil. If we find it, it will be like finding a lost Picasso. And even if we don't, we'll have a fascinating documentary about Wells himself and the making of his lost masterpiece on our incredible journey to Brazil to search for the lost print.